1950, you had 25 million people took an international holiday. And in those days, it was very much a luxury experience. People got onto airplanes and dressed up in a suit and tie. It was for very formal occasions. Probably by 2050, we're talking about 4 to 4.5 billion people taking an international holiday. Right at the centre of these changes is, is probably the issue of sustainability. It's the tourist wanting a more sustainable experiences and industry responding to, to that need. Some of the changes that are occurring now and will be important for the future are things like virtual reality. Imagine climbing a mountain or going through a forest. We can overlay different stories and experiences about, about that. Imagine going to Vegas in the year 2050 and the star of the night is Elvis Presley. He's a virtual reality hologram. He's somebody that's come to life. It's an experience you think is real, but although you know he's just an image and he's dead. So technology interacts and changes the experience without having an impact on the environment and informs us more about that experience and what we're about to see and do. From a religious perspective, we've seen the rise and dominance of Islam as a more important religion. And as part of that rise, there's a desire people have to travel to Mecca. So you're going to see Saudi Arabia grow fundamentally as a tourism destination. And we're going to see more countries in the Middle East do more in the terms of tourism. Imagine in 2050, Iran as the world's top cultural heritage destination. Imagine Afghanistan as the last unconquered mountains of the world. And imagine the opening up of North Korea as the new destination because they can simply just rise uh, and become a lot more accessible for tourism. Uh, but without doubt, the, the big change is it's China. China right at the top of the league table, both in the terms of outbound travel and inbound travel. Right at the centre of hotel design is the issue of sustainability, and right at the centre of that is sustainable materials and sustainable architecture. So looking to the future, it's, it's all about using things that are green, recycling, but recreating things in a sustainable manner. Some of the other changes we are going to see is a lot more personalization in the hotel bedroom. For example, I think with programmable matter or claytronics, you'll be able to have a bed that suits you personally. You'll be able to have a bed that suits your body shape. It could be firm, it could be soft, or it could be somewhere in the middle. The role of the window in the hotel bedroom, that becomes your flat screen TV, for example. It can create a picture or a scene. If you've got 200,000 US dollars, you can take a, a day trip into the stratosphere, into that suborbital day trip experience. If you've got 7 million US dollars, you could probably book a flight and stay in one of the space stations. So going forward to 2050, it becomes a lot more accessible, but it will still be the ultimate and probably the world's most expensive tourism experience in 2050. Tourism to a certain extent has always been about mobility. It's the ability to get from A to B. So imagine traveling from New York to Beijing. If we talk about hypersonic travel, that means it's a four or five hour journey. And that changes and shifts tourism completely. It makes tourism or anywhere in the world a short haul destination rather than a long haul destination. So we're probably going to see the dominance of the electric aeroplane in the terms of around 2075. So there's lots of ifs there, but we're in that cusp of these things are feasible.